And there we go. Yeah. So I think it's on. And um, as usual, you can't see me right from uh, the start. Uh, I just have to switch it over. Uh, and I'll be doing that in a jiffy. So you'll be able to see me. But first, I'll just run this little intro clip. Yeah. And there we go. So we're live. Um, hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack and you're watching a Hack Attack live episode. This is Cubasis, even though it might not look like it at uh, the moment, but it does now. So I've got an, a drum machine loaded here. But before we get into that, I'm just going to give people a little bit of time to enter the stream. Um, so um, I'm just going to talk... Um, about what am I going to talk about? Yeah, I've been working hard with this um, core gadget, eight bit, eight eight bit, eight eight bit, ah, eight bit dubstep. <laughs> it's a it's not a tongue twister, but it feels like it when you're supposed to say it quickly. Okay, so I've been working with these eight bit dubstep production tricks series, and um, I'm working on part two and part three at the same time. And, and and I just realized when I was working with uh, part three, I, 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 I jump between the videos when I edit them um, just because I get bored working with the same thing over and over. Uh, so neither of them are done, but you know, it's getting there. And I just realized that part three, I've, I've made that too long. Um, and that's, uh, that's interesting. Hopefully I've given people enough time to enter the stream. Um, because what I really want to talk about is actually um, Cubasis 2 here and and uh, the new drum machine. It's an in-app purchase, which is, uh, I'm fine with that because it's, it's rather cheap. Um, and it contains some cool classical sound. And so they call it Classic Machines, which is uh, quite, quite uh, fitting. And there's no sound. Why is there no sound? Why is there no sound? This is off to a bad start. Did I do something wrong here? Let me just unload that. And I'm going to check again if there is any sound. So let's see here. No, I don't have any sound. How weird. You know what? I'm just going to restart Cubasis. I get this sometimes when I've got an app loaded, it not only Cubasis, other apps, and I shut down the screen or just, you know, turn it off. Uh, not turn it off, but I, I just blank the screen. I, I use the power button and put it in like standby. And then when I come back, um, there's no sound in my apps. And, and that happens with a few apps. So uh, I don't know if that's something, you know, let's just blame Apple for it because they're usually the ones who mocks stuff up. Ooh, yeah, we have some sound. So I'm actually going to unload this. Now, there's a there's a bunch of new stuff in, in, in Cubasis, but mainly what's so cool is this um, this note uh, thing and um, and, the, and and the drum machine. And also, they've made some really cool design choices now with the uh, the way you add tracks. And that's why I removed tracks here. So if I wanted to add another track, I'll just press this plus button. And now we get um, a menu w with um, audio and MIDI, which is nice. But the coolest thing is in that. No, it's the duplication button. And this is something I've been longing for. Oh, uh, since I got on iOS and started using Cubasis. You see, I used to be um, I, on desktop. When I was on desktop, I used Propellerhead's Reason. I used um, Fruit Loops and I used Cuba Cubase. These were the three DAWs I used and I used them for different kinds of things. I, might, I mainly made beats in, in Fruit Loops and I made synthesizer crazy things with... Um, with a reason and then I did these wave productions when I use waveforms with Cubase 
and the duplication button just being able to duplicate a track with you know all the effects and everything in it being able to do that is something i've really missed i mean it's a real chore just having to add a track after a track and you want the same settings on them i do that for drums and other stuff and you have to you have to input every effect every processor every time you don't have to do that now so we're going to press plus on midi here and then i'm going to do this i'm going i'm just going to load up an instrument and i'm going to load up the classic machine 8 classic i really like that uh, and then we're going to press the duplicate button because now we have this chosen and it's going to duplicate it and we, we're going to try this out so i'm going to delete that again and i'm going to go into the insert effect and let's do let's do this we're going to turn on the studio if equalizer and just do this crazy thing there and add a roomworks um, reverb you get the roomworks reverb if you uh, for free if you register with uh, steinberg so you can do that through the uh, what is it this this setup no the shop i can't remember where but you do that you register and you get the room works uh, it's it's a reverb it's the same uh, same thing that they have in the big one on desks desktop desktop it sounds just as good um and so i i really 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 like it um let's see here i just want i need to get the video up uh, in the window here on my second ipad so i can see your the chat window um oh there's already a bunch of people here so hello everyone thank you so much for joining up and um i'm i'm really happy that you're here so um i'm just gonna see what you're saying here um audio sync seems to be drifting samuel says yeah I, i've i've tried to fix you know my settings with obs um but it's i haven't i haven't really really learned how to do it properly yet i've done these tests with my broadband connection um and my broadband provider and the speed i get up and everything and i know what to set my bitrate at and the resolution and everything and I'm, I'm keeping safe levels and even though i do that i sometimes get problems and before i start actually streaming i do these test live streams two or three times before the live stream so i've already streamed a few times today and you haven't seen that and i checked everything and it looked good so i'm sorry if i'm drifting i i hope it's not too too um bad and um is there anything more okay so dean says the the, the audio seems stable at his end so um it appears it differs hello christian that's very nice of you to say. Um, yeah, so let's get into this. Let's get into this. I really want to get into this. So we've loaded up one MIDI track with the uh, the new drum machine thing. And we are going to play more with that. I'm going to make a beat or something. That's going to be fun, I, th I think. And now we have loaded it up with a Roomworks Reverb. And we have done some settings some settings it's one setting in the studio equalizer and now we're going to press the duplicate button see i haven't tested this properly yet okay so it's duplicated it looks the same and it's keeping the settings Woo! oh i love this this is so this is so lovely this is so lovely this is the door i use when i work with waveforms there's still no other door that quite does it like cubase for me because I know, I know that Aurea does it. I know, but I don't like Aurea. I don't like the interface with Aurea. I, I, what I do like with Aurea is the extra inner purchases you can buy, the cool effects and stuff. I mean, I've used those kinds of effects on desktop, and they're awesome. And you can only have them in Aurea, and that's another thing I don't like about Aurea. But there's nothing wrong with, with Aurea. Oh, who am I kidding? I've tried working with it so many times and it's just not working. So what we're going to do is just do this. Turn that off and let's let's play a little bit with these sounds. Ooh, can I don't know if you can get that low end. I mean, I've set the resolution of the audio so badly. 
It's so nice. It's so it's so crisp. And the cool thing here is the note repeat. They've put in a note repeat and you can automate that stuff. I th I think you should be able to do that. You should be able to do that because you can automate the uh, the other effects like the stutter effects for the master and and everything. So let's let's play with that. And then you can switch it to triplets. Ooh, love that. Yeah, that's maybe a bit too much. Okay. Ooh, it's so sharp. I don't know if it's loud for you. And let's open up the pads here. Here we have the pads and there we have a note repeat also. Oh, okay. You know what would be really cool? I'm going to I'm going to mention this to Lars, the developer for Cubasis, but it would be cool if you could set these values independently for each pad, right? I mean, so you could set like um, for the uh, where is it? Where is this? Where's the snare? There. So you could set the snare at 16 and then you could set like uh, the hi-hat at triplet 8. That would be awesome. I wonder if you can record like multiple lanes. No, I'm, I'm thinking that probably if you're automating this, it's probably going to be one lane. So let's try that. But it would be nice to record... Um, Maybe record a um, a track for this first. Hope that's not too loud. I usually bring it down. Okay, so now I have to play live, and oh, I don't like doing that. I'm gonna. It's gonna sound so bad. It's gonna. I know I sound flustered, but it's gonna sound so bad. Where is it? I can't play like that. I usually play with one hand. Oh, oh, God, God, it's hurting my head. In the worst case scenario, I'm just, you know what? You know what? I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm doing it like this instead. Maybe this will work better. Let's try that instead. That's way too slow, so let's raise it up raise it up raise it up to 140 bpms yeah that that's did i just what what just happened? Oh, I didn't arm the track. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. Kill me. No, no, I don't mean that literally. Jesus. Uh, okay, so what do we have here? Yeah, let's let's use that part. It sounds like I played that one right. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a dry throat. I've been working out today and it the weather was really really nice. I've been taking care of uh, some bushes, you know, cutting some bushes and digging some holes in the ground and planting flowers and and fl onion flowers, not onion flower, flower onions. I've been planting flowers. I've been planting flowers, okay? So it's been such a nice, nice day and it's been raining a bit and oh, I just, I just love that weather. You know, any kind of, um, uh, any kind of, I don't know how to say that in English. I need to check that up. Uh, do, 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 can anyone here tell me, uh, what do you call like, oh, come on, um, uh, Samuel, help me here, near the bird. How do you say that in English? I can't even, I can't remember. C 
seems to be in rhythm. So let's try to add, because I want to try this, um, this order thing um, that they put in now. So we're going to add another one, but this time we're going to load uh, something from the Microsonic and we're going to choose the uh, classic electric piano, I think, and then bring up the pads. No, not the, like that. Yeah. Let's try that. I want to try recording that. Um, I mean, this is something I would use the note repeat for because I'm a bad player and it's already playing chords for me and it's already repeating it for me. So, I mean, it's it's just a really quick way of making some 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 beats. Um, Bo Beat says downpour. The word I was looking for, downpour, rainfall. Yes, but if you're talking about like a general word for anything that comes from the sky in the form of rain, in the form of water, but in different states. So like uh, like hail could also be categorized under this word that I'm uh, searching for and rain and snow so it's all called something we call it near the bird in Swedish near the bird with an uh you know that round thing with two dots on it by the way hello Bo <laughs> oh Bo I saw your question right before I started to stream so you were asking me is it worth the price of Cubase's right now because it's at half price and it's going to stay at half price i think i saw the, uh, the, the that it's going to be like half price up to the 17th of july um i think tom tom Wies or tom weiss no tom Wies, uh synth anatomy i think he wrote that on his facebook page by the way if you haven't seen his channel you should check it out he makes reviews and stuff too um he's also got a, a blog site so I would say, Bo, that I I don't know if it's worth it for you. I mean, if you have a newer iPad, then it's gonna work like like a charm on there. And do I think that Cubase is worth is worth the money? Yes. Are you gonna be using it? If you're not gonna be using it, then it doesn't matter what it costs. Uh, it wouldn't be worth your money, right? But if you've tried or looked at Aurea. Is there a light version of Aurea uh, and you don't like that one, then I think you might like this one even better. Uh, I mean, you have used Cubase before, haven't you? And they, they keep on just updating it. And what they've done now is awesome. So, yeah, I think it's worth it, Bo. Just go grab it. Yeah. So let's try to record this. that isn't working because I'm what what what's happening here is it not recording my notes it should have just recorded that over there but it didn't hmm so yeah it's just gonna record on the uh, track I've got armed and of course I'm using the pads on that one so that's why it probably didn't work I'm not giving myself enough time to get into this thing here so let's just stretch it up like that Another thing I really like with Cubase, Cubase is, is that they've made the workflow really, really smooth. It used to be a chore just moving the window around and the files around. It used to be hard. You have no idea what the most of us using Cubase is had to go through. I'm talking to Bo here now. What we had to go through in the beginning when we started using Cubase is, I think we just, what do you say? Like with, I think we bled through it. That, that's what we did. We bled through it hoping on our knees, you know, hands up, high in the sky, that they would fix it. And they did fix it. You know, we had faith in them and they, um, they, they, they made it happen. Yeah, 
yeah, it's working. It is definitely laying out the notes just like I want them. Now, it's quite loud, so we're gonna pull it down. And the next thing we're going to do is to add a little bit of reverb to this. Yeah, I, th I think that sounds pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. So hello everyone that is joining up on this stream. We are dive, dive, diving, we're diving deep into Cubase's 2 here and the new update. It's pretty sweet. So I, I kind of like I kind of like these drums, but let's switch them out. I mean, we're using the new drum machine, so why not switch it out while we're playing it? So let's loop that. <laughs> I actually do love that. <laughs> that sounds great. the sound of that so um, let's let's um, let's put an equalizer on this thing here um, what am I doing I'm on the channel strip I want to put an equalizer on there and I'm not going to do it like this the first thing I'm going to do is to try to find frequencies that I don't like so I'm going to give it a, a really sharp cue point Okay, so I need to be careful here because usually the snare drum is usually in that area around 200 hertz. Now I'm in between, I'm at 150 hertz. And so I'm going to affect both the, the uh, mid bass of the bass drum and the body of the snare drum. But at this point, I think it's going to sound pretty cool. Yeah, we're getting a more dubby feel on that drum there. So let's make another peak, another peak, and drive that bass drum up. Ooh, too sharp. Now it's a bit too sharp for me, actually. I want it to be more... Uh, I don't know. I, I want I want to flat out the uh, the um, upper register, and then we're gonna shadow the drums. You know, sh shadow. I'll I'll show you what I mean with that. If you have no idea, maybe you already do. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. So. Now we're gonna use that duplication thing that I love so much. Duplicate, yay, look at that. Then solo that one out, and now we're gonna kill all the bass in this one. Okay, so there we have something nice, and let's put an effect on that one, a delay. And right now I'm pulling the, um, I'm using this almost as if, I, if we had subgroups. If we had subgroups, then I could port the same sound out on, a, on its own mixer bus and then put effects on that one um, instead of doing what I'm doing now because now I'm using two tracks, uh, actual physical tracks. Um, and so that's why I'm pulling the effect of the delay to 100%. 
because I'm gonna mix this sound in with the uh, other drums. Now, what would be cool would be to put some uh, um, like uh, some older type chorus effect or something on that classic piano. So this is something I would love to do, by the way, you know, being able to move effects up and down. That's also something we could do on the big one um, on the desktop on Cubase. But here it seems we can't. No, we can switch these two, but we can't switch those. No, we can switch those ones because they're part of that strip. Okay, so we can't do that. It doesn't matter. Let's put a chorus effect on it. And I'm, I'm going to use something that you can find inside, uh, not a chorus, but a rotary speaker. There we go. And this is part of the effects pack uh, two. And the, the FX packs cost as, as much as the drum machine does. So there's three in-app purchases in Cubases too, if you haven't, you know, if, if you're new to Cubases or if you haven't checked that. And I do think they're all worth that money because it's not mu much money and you get a lot of effects for that price. And all of the effects are old school in one way or another. And I, th I think I find that a bit interesting that, that Steinberg chooses to go retro with their effects and even the drum machine now and everything else i mean the drum machine may might not be that strange because a lot of the old old school sounds are coming back thanks to thanks to because of trap and everything else being made um but still they choose to go retro with their effects so there's like vintage stuff all over the place and rotary speaker is so i mean that's that's a Le Leslie Cube, um, there's something you use on an old Ho uh, Hormund, Hormund, an old Hammond organ. A bit of a switch there, mix up with the. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Um, let's let's um, let's play around with the uh, drums. I want to hear more more drum sounds from that thing because we've only listened to to a few so far. And the cool thing is, I don't have to uh, like make a new channel and everything. Ah, oh, just I just have to press duplicate and make sure that that one is soloed out. Come on, there we go. Hmm, interesting. Is that one not mapped? Oh, so okay, so they're laid out differently. That's very interesting. So this one doesn't do anything. Okay, th then we know that they're mapped differently. I don't know if that's a bug or if they're supposed to be like that, but uh, when we... S when we uh, switch to the nine then it got switched up and we can no longer hear a hi-hat oh what was that that was that was almost scary. I almost wet myself there. What what the Let me just pull down the sound. I want to hear this one. That was loud. Ooh. 
Wow, that that sounds awesome. That <laughs> that's actually quite funny. <laughs> Oh, I don't... What is that? What is that? It sounds like a resonator. Oh, okay, let's switch it up here. Ooh, I want to go retro with this. It makes me want to listen to some old, stu old school. I've got some uh, Miami bass records behind me. Uh, vinyl records. I just loved that music when I was younger. I used to listen to it all the time. Uh, I uh, I even I think I busted my my uh, my father's vinyl deck uh, from from <laughs> overuse. Yeah, I can't remember his reaction, but I um, assure you, he certainly, most likely, wasn't too happy about that. It was an old Ferguson um, amplifier with a Ferguson vinyl plate. No, I remember what I did. <gasps> I poured water in it. I, I wasn't too old, okay? I was very young, and I, po I, 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 I poured water into his amplifier. I just, I just realized that now. I just, I have to call my mother later and, and ask her, is, is that true? Did I pour water into my father's Ferguson amplifier? Okay, so here we're back to the old mapping again. I keep going into the mixer and pulling down and up the with the volume, but there's a volume knob right there. Right there. It's right there. I, it's too big, so I can't see it. Okay, so they're all mapped differently. Oh, so we're, we're at the end of the list. So how many kits are there actually? Let's see here. Um, so it seems like they have like a normal kit, a kit of each and then they put effect on it. So they're basically taking one kit and making it to two. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's about 10 kits. Uh, and then there are 10 FX kits, it seems like. And I can't remember which one we had, but it doesn't matter because we made a duplicate. Let's try to add some bass to that. Um, and since we are doing everything Cubasis and Steinberg, let's let's uh, choose a um, something from Steinberg. Um, I haven't had this one downloaded for quite some time. The Microlog um, factory presets. That's way too low, man. That's a bit too... Is it... The micrologue looks different to me somehow. I'm not thinking about this. I'm not... I'm thinking about another synthesizer, am I not? Am I... Am I off here? What, what am I, oh, now I get it. Uh, I need to get out of that list. Is that list supposed to be there? 
Hey. How do I remove the li the list now? Wait, wait. There we go. Okay. That's weird. That that looks so different. Never mind. Now we come to the next stage uh, where I show you that I'm really a bad player. Did I just record that over the... Oh, I, I can't believe this. I am so bad at this. This this is the worst thing. Why peop, This is why I never want to make beat making uh, live videos. I mean, some people do it well. Like uh, like my friend Accurate over at uh, Accurate Beats. I mean, he's, he's crazy with the beat making live. I hope he's not <laughs> watching. I hope you're not watching. I hope you're somewhere else right now. Let's see here. Is Bo still here? Is Bo still here? Or did he just go and buy Cubasis? Maybe he's sitting using Cubasis. For anyone who doesn't understand what, I, what I'm talking about, Bo Beats were here. Uh, was here, Bo, from the channel Bo Beats. And he was asking, uh, should I go get Cubasis? And basically my answer was yes. So I'm wondering if he just disappeared and went and got Cubasis. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, <clears throat> two, two years? Scales. He says scales. Yeah, I should be using scales. I know. I do that in every other app. I use scales all the time. Uh, because I can't play. Hmm? There we go. Yeah, I I th I think that works. I think that works. I can't believe I actually made it. I made it. I actually did it. I actually did it. So let's heat that sound up because it's, um, you know, it, it's kind of stale. No, it's, it's like it's gone stale. It's like an, like an old jar of, of pickles. You open it. You pour out all the liquid and then you let it sit there for days. And right, so we have that amp simulator. Now this is something I actually used to use a lot when I was using Cubase on the desktop. Um, I just love working with this one. but. Usually, it, uh, I end up not using it um, because it introduces so many other crazy artifacts into my s stuff, especially when I'm making electronic music. And this is kind of electronic music, kind of. I actually like that. Let's try this first. 
let's let's just try the channel strip because it's got a nice overdrive saturator in there yeah that definitely does something with the waveform and uh, let's turn on the studio equalizer Yeah, yeah, you're right, Tony. Uh, scale, stale pickles. Let's do that. Let's change the name from classic machines to stale pickles. Stale pickles it is. Very nice. Let's keep on working with stale pickles. So two years, think it sounds too confusing. Uh, could you be more specific T and tell me exactly what it is about it that sounds confusing? Is it the bass or is it the mix between the stuffs? I'd love to hear your opinion. Let's let's just tweak that down a bit and destroy a little bit of the middle there. There we go. And that room reverb on the um, the drum is just a bit too much. Where is it? What the? Didn't we put... I could have swore that we put... Didn't we put like a... Um, a reverb on there I thought we did did I I removed it maybe I removed it right okay so let's switch out the drums because it's uh, it's crazy it's going all over the place and it's like we don't have any control over it so let's go with something more um, let's bring out the list here Too much bass in that one. See, here's a problem when when it's when it's like this, when everything is mapped differently, and you want to switch around between the drums, then this is very very uh, confusing. Because now I've played out a pattern and all I want to do is switch around the presets and try out the new sounds. And then I come upon a few presets where the hi-hat isn't mapped like, I, like the way I played it or something else isn't mapped like the snare in someone. We, we only heard the bass. And so that's very counterintuitive. This is something I'm going to talk to the uh, Cubase team about because that needs to change. This is really unhelpful. Sorry, um, the MacBook was acting up there. I, I thought I lost the stream. I hope I didn't lose the stream. Two years says, we have a conversation about Beatmaker 3 and that's confused me, not your music. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I thought you were talking about the B. I'm sorry. Uh, that's... Um, that's that's good, Jacob. Why don't you try to? Hey, Bo does that really well, you know, with the comment section. Um, he always checks over the comments. I've watched him, you know. He checks over the comments and he's able to pick out everything. And Andreas too. But me, I'm so bad at it. 
I mean, I can focus on several things when I'm playing stuff live and recording it, okay? Because, you know, I make like 30 takes or 12 takes or at least two takes when I record something. But I can do multiple stuff really, really well over long periods of time. But whenever I live stream, it goes to, well, it doesn't go well. It doesn't go well. And I keep hitting the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, let's just choose that one for now. It's kind of inoffensive. It's a very inoffensive beat, but I kind of like it. So now is the part where I, I should just add something, you know, to go solo with this and just play something out nicely. Really don't want to do that. Really don't want to show you how bad I am, but I'm going to do that. So um, let's add another MIDI track and uh, let's move this one down. I like keeping my projects nice and clean. And and uh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, yeah, that's right. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Classic. What did I... Didn't I just add a... What did I add? Oh, it just... Never mind. I'm so confused right now. I'm confused right now. Let's see here. The microlog. No, maybe the microlog. Yeah, let's, let's uh, use the microlog. And... Um, Let's try to find uh, maybe some strings, I don't know. Otherwise, we'll just tweak a sound. That's, that's not what I wanted. Not what I wanted at all. No, 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 not, don't, don't do that. Oh, do that and then try again. So, um, where this doesn't sound right to me at all. Let's let's bring in uh, let's bring in a piano or something. No, not a piano, but something maybe. F I would love a flute. You see, I haven't been using the sampler um, a lot inside Cubasis. I, I didn't I didn't like the sampler for some reason. Uh, otherwise, I would just make my own flute thing with the mini sampler. But I, I haven't done anything with it, actually. Uh, let's see here. What do we have? What do we have? We have a tape flute. A tape flute. Yeah, that sounds nice. That sounds nice, and let's do some shitty playing. Oh my god, that's so sour. Let's try to record something like that. It sounds kind of cute, I think. Um, that's the wrong one, Jacob. Just arm the right track. Where's the right track? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, 
and let's make that a distant sound. So Joe O'Hagan says he enjoys the Mina sampler. I bet you do. I just uh, maybe I haven't just put myself into it, you know, enough. I haven't given it a chance. So um, let's loop that and let's try to make that sound distance. go but the first note isn't I hope it's right now so let's try that yeah that sounds uh, pretty nice uh, let's just duplicate that. I just love this new duplication thing and let's give it a new new thing clarinet. I don't think I'm gonna like this I was wrong. I was wrong. So let's uh, spread those out in the stereo field and let's pull that one down That's gonna become a nice layer yeah, baby. Yeah, that sounds real good. Mm, like that. So, this is here's a username I just have to read out loud because it's so awesome. Obscure culture reference. Obscure culture reference asks, how do you find Cubase's on the uh, the third? Let's just call it 13 in uh, 13 inch uh, iPad. Any idea if they will adapt to the resolution at any time soon? A lot of wasted real estate. Yes, I do agree with you that there is a lot of wasted real estate. Let think for this, for example, figure you could have two of them, right? But I think that that's inherent to the way that iOS works. I mean, developers could probably do pretty much what they wanted if they could, you know, if they could, if they were allowed to. I don't think they were allowed to. Um, I also think that, like, like figure is heavier than most people think. When you run figure at f in full effect with all the automations and stuff. Um, you know what? I think they make it, like, scalable for scalable in one size i don't know how to explain it but scalable in one size so it will fit all devices um and <clears throat> that's where the uh, 13 inch ipad it kind of it loses a bit there in the potentiality because it the potential of actually having two apps beside one another and also like cubase is being scaled differently so you can fit more tracks when you when you're scrolling through them I mean, it's basically got the uh, the same amount of stuff here as I have on my iPad Mini One, um, and I wish that it felt like this, like the sizes here. I I almost wish I had those these sizes on my iPad Mini One or my Mini Two, whereas on the iPad Pro here, the big one, I just feel that they could make it smaller, and I think that I, I don't know. It's so different when uh, when talking about development of apps with developers and they they all tell me it's different developing for desktop systems and for for ios um so i hope that someday they start utilizing it especially one thing that one viewer asked like no he didn't ask me he said that why is the setup button always so small and it doesn't matter with like the device you're using it on and yeah they're, they're really small they're really small and this is one thing that I get a lot of emails about not not the thing being small but people always wondering where do I find able to link uh, where do I turn off this and that where do I set the MIDI and and everything and it's usually hidden within the setup and people just overlook it so I think they should do something with that 
Uh, I mean, it's standard for all apps. It doesn't really matter what app you're in. So I, I yeah, to answer it, ob obs obscure culture reference. Yeah, I do think that there's a lot of space wasted here. That hi-hat, no, that snare is just a tad too loud for me. But we're also going to blend in that little thing I made earlier. It's a bit confusing. It, it's like um, the timing isn't really, really right there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I should just remove that one. So I'm going to do that. I am going to remove that because we made that with another drum. We could just change the drums. No, we're just going to do that. That's pretty nice. Um, like. In the meantime, if there's something you want me to show inside Cubasis 2, then why don't you type it out in the uh, comment section? Because I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye there right now um, and also doing stuff in, the, uh, in here. Um, uh, I'm seeing some stuff about the duplication thing. Yeah, the duplication is just, it's just so, so awesome. Like on Cubase, on desktop, you could go into the mixer and if you wanted to copy the mixer settings and just paste it on another channel, you could do that. You had buttons for that. If you've never used it on desktop before, it's it's a really powerful, powerful piece of software. Um, Samuel Lindemann says, could it be that Steinberg waits for iOS 11 regarding file management? Uh, you could access Cubase's documents folder from the files app. Oh, that would be so awesome. That would be so awesome. Now, also, if there's anyone here testing out the um, iOS 11 beta, tell us in the comment section if you, you are and your experiences. Uh, you won't see me install iOS 11 beta on, on anything. Uh, I wouldn't do that. And if any of you are thinking of doing it, please don't do it on your main device. Do not do it. On your main device if you have a spare device that you don't care too much about and i'm serious here you can, you could end up breaking your st stuff i think i saw someone over at the ipad musician do, uh, forum doing that is that true samuel do you know joe uh ian hey hello ian uh, do you know did someone actually brick their phone or or ipad with ios 11 i know it's happened with other like iOS betas in the past. That's why I'm just giving you that warning. Um, yeah, as I said, if there's anything you want me to show you specifically here, then just just tell me about it. I don't know what to do with this track, actually. Maybe I should add some more flute to it. Maybe not. I just feel like not working with this one at the moment. Maybe, maybe we could do something, something else. What could we do? Let's, let's add some more stuff to this. Yeah. So I'm going to add a, um, oh, hello, mom. I got my mom in the stream. That's always nice when she shows up. Mm, let's see here. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. I, I just want to move this. Thank you. Right down there. And did I just duplicate two tracks? Did, did I just did I just do that? Maybe I tapped two times. It doesn't really matter. Ooh. Okay, so let's turn that down and let's choose another instrument here. Uh, let's see here. Maybe an organ? Not an organ. It depends. No. 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 Hey. 
Hey. That could work. Okay, so let's try to add that because that kind of, you know, it suits the beat and everything. So why not do that instead? And let's loop that and let's process that. You know, it was going quite wild there. It's something that is very hard is just being able to properly control the velocity here on the pads. Because it, the velocity gets, it, it's, it gets higher the, the more like centered you play. So that's loud and then less loud at the edge. So it's kind of hard to, to do that. Well, I, I'm not good at it anyway. Let's put a compressor here. I finally, if anyone knows, I've been complaining at the compressor, you know, being loaded with plus 10 decibels on the volume or the gain output, which is crazy. As soon as you load it up, you're gonna kill your ears depending on what sound you have in there. I usually do this and when I'm, when I'm doing drums or bass and suddenly I get like hammered in my eardrums with the volumes and I told Lars this now that maybe they should put it at plus minus zero decibels because that would just be nicer to the user yeah that's good now we got it compressed and let's add some room works to this So, what does that sound like? Okay, let's do it like that. It sounds pretty good, what, what do you think? Now, the only thing needed for this one is someone rapping. And I, I can't do that now. I've got the microphone and everything ported in such a way so that you can hear me. So it's ported into the Mac and I don't have an extra microphone. I am gonna invest in another microphone because I want two microphones in here. I want one like dedicated for this. I've tried streaming with the microphone connected to the iPad before. And I've noticed that when I go long periods doing stuff um, and I run the live stream for like two hours, I start getting problems with the microphone and that's not good. Uh, so I, I want like a microphone with a real XLR connection to the mixer I have and to be able to drive it with external effects and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna be able to do live shows in where I'm singing and where I'm rapping and stuff. That would be nice. So what can we do right now to solve this right now? Right now, we could go into AudioShare and check what I have in my folders because I might have some grime vocals in there. Not from me, but from Majestic. I love Majestic. Okay, so let's 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 check it. Check it. Let's check. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I'm surprised to see that there are so many watching right now. I'm usually like I'm used to people up to twelve or. 15 up to 20 watching 
and it says it's 34. Are you th really that many? If you are, what, why don't you tell me what locations you're in right now? What countries? Maybe what the time is? I'm always interested in hearing that. Um, and after summer, I will start streaming in very obscure times for me. Uh, in the middle of night and morning. Because I know that most of the... If there are any US developers here right now, most of you, uh, you're in that time zone. So I need to get in there too to make streams for you. So let's check out what we have in the Loop Masters thing. I buy, I, I've bought a lot of stuff from Loop Masters. Um, back in the days, I was one of those who said, hey, buy, buy samples. No, you can't buy samples. That's useless. I don't say that anymore. I buy samples. Uh, and I love buying samples when it's good. And I especially buy stuff that is like um, Arabian sounds, Indian sounds. It, it doesn't really matter. Didgeridoo sounds. I don't care it, as long as it's not from my region. Because if I want folk music, I know where to go. I live in Sweden. We've got lo loads of awesome folk music here. Um, and I do sometimes mix that in into my uh, music. So... Do I have to check the volume now? Yeah, I'm gonna pull down the volume because it might get loud. So let's see here. Oh, oh, 140 BPM lines. Are you ready for the rough Nick bass? Are you ready for the rough? I guess that's a little bit too crazy. We want something soft now, wouldn't we? <laughs> ready for the rough Nick bass. That's majestic, everyone. Like when I'm on a rhythm and bust up the deck, my This this is just I got my mother in the live stream and we have this dude talking about his dick. That that's not that's not nice. Oh my baseline gang get anked to this. This is just too much um it, it would fit if we had like a dubstep beat, but not for this. Yo, hit him with a high and a low. I think I've heard that sample being used in like uh maybe two hundred popular like EDM music uh, tracks. Dance. Dance. That's uh, as straightforward you can get. Shake. And shake. Rinse out. Drop that low. Rinse out. Drop that low. What is it actually talking about here? Shake. So. Bubble. Oh, bubble. Rinse out. Drop that low. I'm, I'm not liking the reference here. Out some of people that be loving the vibe. Rip up the rhythm and reach it out live. It's too energetic. I don't think I have anything else. How many of you are working with uh, hip hop type music? Hello everyone. Oh, let's see here. So we've got people from Illinois, Germany, California. I know Joe, uh, <laughs> he's all the way over in, in, uh, oh, in Ireland. Um, look at that, Rockwell, Maryland. Hello everyone, near Norwich, uh, UK. Look at that. UK, Somerset, Minneapolis, USA. Hi from dad. Is that, is that my dad? That's so weird. I never thought my dad would choose a username. Hi, 1620. No, 16200. That's, a, that's an interesting name you chose. Is that, is that really you, Dad? Is that you, Dad? If, if that is you, Dad, then, then how did I, I... I talked about this with the um, audience here before, that I accidentally destroyed your hi-fi system back in the days. Did I do that? Was it, was it like me pouring water into it? Was that what I did? Because if you're my dad, you would know. And my mother says it is my dad. Okay. So, mom, why don't you tell the people here in the chat room how I destroyed father's um, hi-fi system, what I did to the uh, vinyl player, because I talked about that earlier. And I can't remember exactly what I did. I thought I poured, like, water into it. D did I do that? Let's see if we can have something. Uh, yeah, maybe we should add something else in there. Um... I don't think this will fit. 
I would need something at 60 BPMs, I think. I need something slower. I love that stuff. Yeah, I like that. Do you like that? I like that. But it's too energetic. Maybe I can stretch it and make it sound really weird. So what is it? It's 24 bit, but yeah, Cubase should be able to handle that. So import that EM coal. Um, let's see here. We, we're working with stale pickles inside Cubase. So um, e EM, EM coal, EM coal, coal. And there we go. So since we have this time stretching, now I'm going to stretch it like Oh, half of the tempo is going to go away. It's going to sound so... Uh, huh? Uh, uh, okay. Add audio and do that. Okay. There we go. Right there. And uh -huh. That looks awkwardly weird. Oh, it's 120 BPMs, of course. So let's time stretch that one. Down. That's going to go faster. And if we time stretch it up, it's going to go slower, but it's going to sound really strange and artifacty. Yeah. Let's have a listen to that. It's going to sound really strange. I actually like it. I don't I don't mind the artifacts and we're going to destroy it a little bit. So let's put a um, here's another effect that you can find in the FX pack. It's the bit reduction. I love using the bit reduction. Let's try to get that in tone um, with uh, some of the sounds in here. I'm going to add the bass. Okay, so now we have a shadow of some kind, so let's see what that sounds like together with the drums. Yeah, so let's hear what that sounds like. Wait, before we do that, let's make the loop proper like that. I think that could sound pretty cool. So here we have a problem instantly, and it's the mix of the thing. So there are frequency within this that, you know, it sounds good on its own and together with the drums. But as soon as we start throwing in everything else, then it kind of disappears. And as a beginner, you usually sit there and you pull the volume up and down and you don't understand how it's, I know because I've sat there for so many years, you know, back in the days trying to you figure out how I was how I was gonna get the volume right, and it's all down to mix and equalizing it properly. And right now it's not equalized properly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solo out. This turned into a beat making session. It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be about the drum machine. But how long can you talk about a drum machine that that has like ten kits in there? Um, yeah. 
So let's solo this one out and listen to the flutes and strings. So it's not fighting with that really, but I think it is fighting with this piano. It is, so let's try to equalize the piano a little bit. Now we have already worked with this, but at that time we didn't know we was gonna add this, so that's why I tweaked it the way I did. By the way, I haven't tweaked it. So I'm going to add an equalizer at the end here. Normally I would always uh, keep an open space for compressors unless I'm working with Gadget. I don't know why I do it like that in Gadget, but for some reason it works. So let's add a studio equalizer here. So it's got that frequency in the piano that really makes it, you know, the body of the piano, it's at the same spot as we've got that boom, 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 boom thing. So. So Sapio, Christian Sapino, not Sapio, Christian Sapino, I, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, is asking, is there an uh, oscilloscope? Um, no, there there is no oscilloscope, and Joe already answered. Uh, however, if you have two iPads, then you could always get the oscilloscope app and uh, port your sound out from your iPad, uh, one iPad or iPhone or whatever, into your other iPhone or iPad. That's how I've done it when I did the um, live stream with them um, when 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 I was testing out waveforms and you know explaining. Uh, synthesis and how the waveforms behave and the way you can take a square waveform and turn it into a sine wave with filters. I was using an oscilloscope and that's an oscilloscope app and it's called oscilloscope. Um, I was using this. Let's see if I can pull it in here. This thing, it's a Behringer UCA202 uh, and I'm using that to port the sound from one iPad into the other iPad and so I could have an oscilloscope. I know it's not helpful if you only have one device, but what are you gonna do? And yeah, Spectrum Analyzer for Cubases, I am gonna put that on my wish list when I send my email to Cub the Cubases people. So now I have to be careful because when I start cutting stuff in this area of the electric piano, I am gonna start fighting with the flutes and stuff. That's the problem we have there. Um, I mean, I've left space for this frequency around slightly above 100 hertz, where we actually have that body of the boom boom sound. I've left space for it in the drum section and in the bass section, but man, it fights with the electric piano.
Yeah, that sounds pretty good. So I'm going to take a little quick uh, check here in the uh, comment section. I mean, you're writing away. I love that. I love seeing a um, an active chat room. That's very nice. I've, I've never... I hope I hope that the channel can grow to the state where we're actually gonna need a moderator in the end. <laughs> I just love watching active chat rooms. Um, coming, you know, born at a year, uh, at a year. When I grew up, chat rooms was a part of my uh, growing up. I mean, with IR, IRQ, IR, IRC, I, IRC, Mirk, IRC, NIRC, IRQ. Oh, I can't remember, but we had these chat rooms, uh, really old ones, and I got a lot of friends that way, and I've lost a lot of friends that way. Lost a lot of friends that way? That sounds really weird. It's not like some internet virus ate them up, but when that time went away, slipped away, um, I lost track of them because there were other places people were going to, um, and then I I was hoping I was going to find them in forums and stuff, but it's not like we ever told each other our real names and stuff, you know? I kind of miss that old day. Uh, the internet was pretty different back then. We were mostly nerds, actually, nerds um, on the web. And today, everybody's on the web. Today, everybody's a nerd, basically. I mean, they, they through our phones and stuff. Uh, I kind of feel I've um, reached an, an edge, an impasse with the stream here. And I've streamed for about one and a half hour. So I'm thinking uh, ICQ, before ICQ, uh, IRQ, um, like like Mirk. Yeah, Mirk. I think it's Mirk, is it? Ah, uh, Samuel, are you still here? <laughs> I bet you would know what I'm talking about. Uh Today I live stream and your my mom and dad shows up. Yes, Northern Cat. Um, my mom is quite active in the chat room at times. Um, it's just, uh, she's, she's just, she's a wonderful person, you know. And even my father was here. Um, I, I don't know if he's been in other streams. I kind of missed that because the, the username was so weird. Sawmill says, yes, Mirk. Yes, Mirk. Ah, that's before ICQ. Before ICQ. I was born 79. Um, I'm going to be 40 in a couple of years. Um, most people don't think that I am. They think I'm some uh, some kid. And, um, yeah. well, I act like one. Drinking coffee too late. But I will be sitting. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this thing now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you if you have any questions at all. Uh, we can do like a Q&A. So think about that and um, uh, just write them down if you have any questions. It could be about anything. Just try to keep, try to stay away from uh, from uh, politics. Yeah, uh, I got to, I, 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 I got to, um, yeah, I, I. I don't enjoy talking about that too much, actually. I do all the time with my girlfriend. She's quite political in her thing. Uh, and today I watched her live stream uh, on Gotland. There's this co uh, thing this week. It's like the biggest political event in Sweden. It's called um, a place called Almedalen. And um, it's a week where all politicians, they get together and do what the hell they do. And my girlfriend with her work uh, and her colleagues are there they have this place and they're gonna be there for the whole week and they have events and seminars and stuff and I watched her live stream today and she's so awesome you know she did a great job she was really nervous and she she did this like last year also and she was really nervous back then but she's learning and she's yeah she's just awesome it was awesome watching someone else like that you know I know what it felt like the first time I, I ever stood on stage back in the day. And that was the most nervous thing I've ever done in my life. I don't, I don't go up on stage anymore. Uh, I kind of changed my life completely since I started uh, drinking and using drugs uh, four years ago. And uh, so being out on stage is still 
too much connected to the feeling of uh, everything going crazy like that. So I am gonna, um, you know, I, I will probably keep on working with this because it's such a nice beat. And if if um, if I finish it, I'll just uh, make sure that I upload it on on Bandcamp or SoundCloud so that uh, you can download it if I get to finishing it. So I'm gonna turn off Cubasis. Uh, and let's see here. Um, I want to show you something real quick uh, while you're thinking of questions, if you have them. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so people have started typing out their 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 date of their year of birth, and it's like 78, 72, 73, 2001. Good to go there, Joe. 71, 74, 80s. Yeah. Am I the only one missing? Hey, all of you should know this like Joe he loves the 80s and some of the music he sent me in, like before it it sounds like something from the 80s so here we have this dude over in Ireland just making 80s music 80s synthesizer music and he's born in 2001 and I think that's that, that clash of uh, uh, of, of uh, cultures like that is awesome um, and that's also, I think, thanks to the internet and things. So what I've got right here is an episode. It's the uh, Korg. Uh, it's a Korg episode. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you uh, real quickly what, what I'm working on here. Uh, here I'm doing a little bit with the equalizer. I haven't felt the need to filter off the incoming signal. Right, and that was the Wolfsburg gadget. Now, let's go back out of here. And the last two gadgets we're going to go through are the Kamata gadgets. These, Yeah, I'm having real fun with this uh, with this series. Uh, it's the dub, uh, the 8-bit. The Let, let's just say it with a video. Doing this one. Right, so we're going to... Yeah, that's some graphics I made. I hope I didn't kill your ears. Oh, that was loud in my ears. Whoa. Oh my. Oh, I feel dizzy. Hope I didn't kill your ears there. So this is the uh, episode I'm working on. This is uh, part three and part number two. I have it there somewhere, somewhere. And in part three, I'm going through the um, the chords and the leads, and I think it's gonna be end up being ten minutes long, and that's why I did this little middle thing here because at this point, about let's see here, about up to here where I get the here, uh, then a bit over five minutes has gone, and usually I end this episode after like seven minutes or something, so. I know from this stage and onward, it's going to be like four minutes. And that's why I did this little interlude here with the uh, cool thing. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> I just love that stuff. Mm. Oh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you that. So I can't see. Uh, um, mm, I can't see any questions, but you're having fun there in the chat room. It almost almost makes me not want to end the stream so you can keep on chatting. I don't know how long the uh, chat room is on. But yeah, so I'm going to end this. And before I do, I didn't say bass today. So now I said it intentionally just so I could do this thing over here. And oh, I'm so smooth. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And it's going, and you can still see the uh, the bad cutouts there. I'm going to add some nice things to it. And I just put up a video like two days ago with this guy called Frank, an interview with Frank. I'm trying to find a new sidekick. And some people think he's scary. <laughs> some people love him. And um, some people want Ami back. I just can't bring back Ami, not because I've... Because of the amount of complaints I got over him uh, looking like a Buddha statue. So uh, apparently some religious people are getting, um, how do I say it, butt hurt because I'm doing that. Um, I think Dalai Lama himself would laugh if he saw that, actually. He seems like a cool guy. But so I'm thinking maybe this fish could be my next, my next sidekick. 
What do you think? That would be that would be cool. Yeah, uh, my mother says abore. That's the Swedish word for bass, not bass. Bass as the fish. Oh, never mind. So I'm gonna end this on this note, and I wanna thank you so much for joining the live stream. And it's always fun doing this, and I I can see that people are enjoying them, and you keep telling me to to make these, so I wanna make them. So if you have any topics or anything you want to see me live stream about, if there's anything you want me to go in depth with, uh, also what I thought about this, why don't you come back to this video or go and uh, comment on any other of my videos. You could just take a video and comment on it. Don't, it doesn't matter if it if it's um, on topic that video. Just comment on it. Tell me what you thought about this live stream. Tell me what you might want to want me to live stream about in the future and stuff like that. Yeah, so th that's uh, <clears throat> Christian Sapino. How can we know when you will do a live stream? Yeah, Christian, I'm so sorry. Um, I usually I'm like this. Yeah, I'm gonna live stream next week, and then I don't announce it, and then the day before I I realize that oh yeah, I'm gonna live stream tomorrow, so I better announce it, and then I forget, and so I n announce it like one or two hours before I go live. I am gonna be better at that, but if you keep, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm serious. If you check in the description of this video, you'll find a link collection of all the places where you can find me. But if you follow me on Twitter, then you will be able to see when I announce stuff, and I will be better at announcing my live streams way before I am going to live stream them. Okay, so just follow me on Twitter. And also on Twitter, I do these uh, Twitter quickies. So they're like two minute mini tutorials. And if you ask me questions about something, then it m might just end up being me making a video, uh, answering your question in that video under two minutes or something like that. Uh, Ian Sainsbury uh, mentions my Patreon. Yeah, I've also got a Patreon account. Um, so if you like what I do, if you wanna see more of this, um, if you want to support creativity and good content on YouTube, then why not sign up on Patreon? On Patreon, you get ex like exclusive access to a playlist where you can watch my um, previous and future uh, Patreon-only live streams, Patreon-only videos. I've also got um, something called a Hack Attack Vault. In there, you'll find um, all of the music I've made during the three and a half years I've produced over 500 videos, almost 600 to be soon enough. Um, all of the music and the live performance music and stuff, I put, I'm, I'm putting them all into a Dropbox account. That's in the Hack Attack Vault. Also stuff like samples, giveaways, uh, presets, all of that becomes available. And it doesn't matter if you back me at $5 or $1. Every, every pay, Patreon gets that, including the uh, playlist thing. And I spit on my iPad there. That wasn't good. Sorry. And in the future, I'm going to add other tiers but I want those tears to contain stuff. Um, hello, Doug. <laughs> Doug from the Soundtest Room came in just now. Look at look at that. I am ending my stream very soon, Doug. So you're a bit late. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. But really nice to see you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to work with Doug um, and the, the Soundtest Room back in the day. Uh, so he's a very, very close colleague of mine. Someone I love incredibly much who helped me a lot when my channel was uh, much smaller. He did so much for me. So, yeah, I, I have a lot to be grateful for. Um, Doug, you know that, right? I've told you. I've told you before. Uh, we should go on a date, Doug. We should. I, I'm going to go down to your country and we should go on a date and we can have ice cream on the beach. Um, and Joe can tag along. Joe is his wife. Can tag along uh, also. And bring 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 it Watson, the dog, and we can feed Watson lots of ice cream. I don't know if he eats ice cream. Not the chocolate kind. I know dogs don't do well with chocolate, but we, we could do that. That sounds like a nice thing, right? So I am gonna end this live stream now. Um, it's been going on for longer than I wanted, and I will probably be live streaming. Sorry, I'm I'm shaking everything. I will probably be live streaming again this week uh, on, let's see now, on Saturday, no, on Friday. So 
today it's what <laughs> what is the day today come on it's tuesday on friday i'm gonna live stream so i am gonna be announcing it it like tomorrow and the day after that so mr Sapino, if you're wondering on friday you will be able to catch me again and if you stay tuned on my twitter you'll know the the time also so um bye bye everyone and um, as usual i wish you a very productive week now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it and now i'm going to awkwardly look for the uh, stop streaming button and in the process make an ass of myself yep there there we go and there's there's the bass okay bye <laughs>